In 1996, the film Hard Eight introduced a new young director to the film scene. Although the movie failed financially, this new filmmaker was able to use the movie to experiment with some of the techniques that would define the visual and narrative style of his career, making the movie more appreciated today because of this. The director in question is NYU dropout Paul Thomas Anderson, and six feature films later, he gave us Inherent Vice. Inherent Vice is a 2014 mystery, crime, drama, comedy based on the 2009 novel by Thomas Pynchon. The story takes place in the early 1970s, a time when the free-spirited peace and love era of the 60s came to a quick halt and shifted American society into a time of paranoia and intolerance towards the counterculture. We follow Larry Doc Sportello, a hippie private investigator whose investigation of a missing billionaire land developer throws him into a maze of conspiracies and corruption, all while the memories of a past love haunt him. The collaboration with Anderson and Pinchon, who has been a highly appreciated novelist since the 60s, came about when Anderson reached out in hopes to adapt one of his works. He was given the novel a month before its publication and immediately began transcribing the work into a screenplay. It came along at the right time for me. I mean, I um, was sort of sick of the sound of my own voice and I'd always loved the pinch on and I'd thought about trying other books that he'd written and so to have this opportunity and to work with this material was kind of like you know, having a, having a great, having, working with a collaborator where normally I'd worked alone in my, in my room and you just sort of struggle through. So I hate the word masterclass, but it feels like it fits that I could to sit with his words and look at how he turned words around and put things together was like, it was like a shot in the arm for me. Anderson's interpretation of the story seems to hold a lot of comparisons to the neo-noir genre wave of the post-World War II era. One clear sign of this representation is something called iconography, or the process of narrative and visual coding that results from the repetition of a popular film story. In the sake of noir, this means dark sidewalks and foggy streets, information gathered by newspapers and telephones, and an overall ambiguity in framing. Along with this, the structure of the film's plot also mirrors that of the genre as well. A detective is given the job, conflict ensues, then through an inherent act of selflessness, we're reminded of the protagonist's nature, and they more often than not return to their loneliness. In addition, Doc himself represents the perfect protagonist of the neo-noir film, lonely, peculiar, and haunted by the past. Compare this to the likes of Travis Bickle in Scorsese's Taxi Driver and J.J. Giddes in Polanski's Chinatown. But Anderson doesn't just leave the film in this dark, neo-noir genre, but rather expands it with something quite contrary. Comedy. I don't know if you have the stomach for it, but this is what we had her looking like. Ah! Mm-hmm. The film, like many of Anderson's others, has a level of comedic relief that runs through the plot. Not only does this affect our intimate relation and sympathy for Doc, but it also adds a valuable spin on the pre-established genre. As Robert Warshow explains, variation is absolutely necessary to keep the type from becoming sterile. We do not want to see the same movie over and over again, only the same form. In my opinion, this is what elevates Anderson's film so successfully. It can be dark and gritty, then immediately followed by the relief of Doc's charm. Did I get you? Overall, as much as any genre is not all audiences' particular taste in film, Inherent Vice 2 is not to be called a movie for everyone. Yet it cannot be denied that the story's mixture of humor, confusion, and suspense is the work of a truly intelligent filmmaker and something that demands an engaged viewer 
ready to surrender their expectations and enter the perspective of the unlikely dazed and confused hippie trying to do as much good as he can. <laughs>